much uh, information on the internet now about sourdough, and there's so much discussion about sourdough. There's a lot of, uh, I find, misinformation, and there's a lot of overcomplication. And uh, I always try to keep, I always try to talk about sourdough in the most simplistic way. And that is that, you know, up until, you know, the late 1800s, all bread was made with sourdough. You know, commercial yeast was invented and produced in, as a byproduct of the brewing industry in the late 1880s, 1890s. So before that, if you wanted, if you wanted bread, you were making sourdough bread. So it's been something that has been part of our, our lives as humans for thousands and thousands of years. So if they could do it without refrigeration and without mixers and without gadgets, uh, we can certainly do it now. And uh, I'm an adherent of like the most simple sourdough, meaning that it's just flour and water mixed together. But I'm gonna do things, I'm gonna do things a little bit, uh, it's gonna seem backwards at first, but it'll all come together at the end of the class. So I made some bread today that is ready to go in the oven. And I'm going to put this bread in the oven now. It's flour, water, salt, sourdough. Um, and you know, just it's flour, water, salt, and sourdough. And then I'm gonna go back and show you how I made the whole process. So this way at the end of our little class today, I'll have a bread coming out of the oven, which will be fun if my timing works out just right. So we're gonna move over towards uh, the, uh, oven area here and I and because I didn't want to use any special really special equipment um, this is a, a loaf of sourdough bread and all I have is my wooden salad bowl I have a French linen cloth and uh, uh, and a cast iron pan that I'm going to bake it in um, I'm going to just go over here and grab it real quick yeah you preheat this is actually a cast iron pan that's designed for baking bread. It's quite hot, so I'm going to be careful. You can see it's hot. And all I'm going to do is I am going to hopefully just dump that right in like so. Look, it, it cooperated. I'm going to give it a little score here. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up this lid. And I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to talk about why I'm doing that in a second. And I'm going to put this in the oven, and I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes uh, with the lid on. Let me just get here. So we're going to do the timer. Okay, so we are good. So the question is, how did we, uh, how did we get from, from flour and water to sourdough? So uh, I'm going to go through the process very simply. So I start out, and I have, if, if anyone wants to buy my book, they're welcome. To, to, all of this information will be in my book. This is 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna blend it together, okay, like so. And that is the beginning of how we make sourdough. And what happens when you combine uh, flour and water together, there is natural yeast that's either in the flour or in the air, or in the water. Uh, there's lots of debates as to where this natural yeast comes from. And when you mix the flour and water together, uh, there's a natural fermentation that takes place. Um, and so the beginning of the sourdough process is I mix the flour and water together. I leave it covered for 24 hours. And the next day, I throw half of this away, or I, I can use it for pancakes or something. And I do the same thing again, okay? So I, this is about maybe 30 seconds of work, okay? 
That's all it is when we start, okay? And I'm gonna repeat this process every 24 hours, anywhere between seven and 14 days. And there's no exact amount. Sometimes, sometimes in the warmer months, it will ferment faster. Sometimes in the winter months, it'll, it'll ferment faster. It's, you're dealing with wild yeast, you're dealing with natural lack of bacilli, and there's no exact uh, rule. Um, I've had sourdoughs develop as quickly as seven days. I've had them take up to 20. And when the sourdough is ready, it's gonna look like this, okay? You can see it, you know, full of bubbles. And if I take a spoon here, if I take a spoon here, you can see it's, it's kind of like milkshake -y, you know what I mean? Um, and it, like when I, when I mix it like this, you'll see it's gonna start bubbling in a second. And of course you can't, you can't smell this, but this smells a little acidic. It smells very fermented. You can see like there's some bubbles happening here and I did the bubbles happening there. And, and the, the mixture as it ferments, it, it becomes very, um, I, I like to use the term, it's a little bit like a milkshake and you'll, you'll see bubbles and you'll see, you'll see, um, it, 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 you'll see active fermentation, okay? And uh, depending on the type of wild yeast that takes, takes uh, root, um, it will have different flavor profiles. And I've spent um, a lot of time researching this and I have spoken to people whose lights are analyzing sourdoughs and analyzing the uh, lactobacilli in sourdoughs. And I have never had anyone give me a solid answer as to why one type of lactobacilli uh, becomes dominant versus another. Um, it's, some people say it's the weather pattern. Some people say it's the, the flower or the microclimate. But sourdoughs, there's, a, there's actually um, a sourdough library in, in Brussels, uh, in Belgium, and they have sourdoughs from all over the world and they analyze them. And uh, there's a lot more questions than answers, but, but it's a natural process that anyone can master with a little time. So I would, I would take this, I would cover this, I would leave this 24 hours, Tomorrow, I would split this in half. I would add 25 grams of water and 20 gram, 25 grams of flour to it. I'll cover it again, and I'll keep going and going and going until the mixture doubles in six to eight hours. So this, this sourdough here, I fed about noon today. So this is not fully active yet, but I wanted to show you like in the middle, um, of the fermentation process. Okay, so this sourdough here is active and ready to be the leaven for, um, for the bread that I just put in the oven, okay? And so when I actually wanna make the bread, it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, simple and straightforward process. And this is, this, is, this is like sourdough 101. So what I do is, um, uh, I take 500 grams of flour, I take 320 grams of water, and I blend them together, and I let them sit for um, about 45 minutes. So I take the flour and water and I put it together, and this is something that in baking terms we call it an autolyse. You're just allowing... Um, the flour to absorb the water, you're allowing the, the, the uh, molecules in the flour to become hydrated, okay? And you allow them to become hydrated and then to relax, okay? So I've taken 500 grams of flour, 320 grams of water. I only work in metric. I don't, I, I, I find uh, volumetric uh, measurement, um, very easy to make mistakes and all you need you don't even if, if anyone's afraid of the metric system all you need is a metric scale and follow a recipe you don't have to you don't have to understand 
the ins and outs of the metric system to be a good baker. So what I have here is I have my 500 grams of flour, my 325 grams of water, and I have 150 grams of sourdough and 12 grams of salt. And just to speed things up a little bit, um, I needed this about four minutes, four or five minutes, uh, about a half an hour ago. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish the kneading process and hopefully you can hear me uh, over the uh, mixer, but you can see the strength in the dough. You can see the, the gluten is, is developing, okay? And you can see, since I've already had it mixing a little bit, you can see how it's pulling away from the, the side of the bowl, okay? But it's not, it's not a firm dough. I mean, this is a fairly, this is a fairly, uh, it's not a super soft dough, but it's a fairly soft dough, okay? And um, there's, I'm just gonna turn this off for a second because it's noisy while, while I'm talking. There's, there's different schools of sourdough making. There's a, there's a whole phenomenon on the internet now where they do these stretches and folds. They call them coil folds and they, they don't use a mixer at all. They just, they, they mix the flour and water together. They add the sourdough, they fold it, they let it sit for a few minutes, they fold it again, they let it sit for a few minutes, they fold it again. Um, you know, being a professional baker, uh, I, I like machines that make my life a little easier. So I tend to like um, using a machine like this uh, to knead the dough. Um, but if I wasn't going to use one, what the, what, what the school of, of baking does is they do something called a, uh, this, the dough would have to be a little bit more relaxed uh, to do this, uh, they do what they call a, a coil fold, meaning they, they come up, they come down, they turn the dough, they turn it up, they, they fold it again, they fold it again, and then they'll put this uh, in, a, in, a, in a bowl, which I'll do right now. I'm going to put a little olive oil in it. I like to put a little olive oil whenever I um, put the dough um, in a container just so it, it slips around easier. So if I was going to uh, uh, do the hand method, I would let this sit for an hour now and then I would fold it again. And you might do that in the, in the first fermentation, you know, three or four times in the course of, you know, three to five hours. So it's a very, um, it's a very time consuming process, but it's not a labor consuming process because you're doing, you know, 30 seconds work, worth of work every hour um, to develop the dough. Um, if, if we were gonna continue with the mixer, I would need the dough for another four or five minutes then I would put it in a bowl like this. I would let it rise for three or four hours. And then uh, I would uh, fold it, uh, do a coil fold, and let it sit for another couple of hours. Um, just because, one second here. You know, I'm really consolidating the process but it's not a lot of work. You know, I, it, people say oh, it's so much time, you know, that you have to remember, you know, to, to, to fold the dough every hour. Like once you develop a routine with it, it becomes actually quite easy and quite straightforward. Um, before I go any further, does anyone have any questions about creating the sourdough? 
Well, yes, Michael. I have a question, Daniel. Let's go, go for it. Well, obviously you've been doing this for a long time and you've got, you know, you're very precise about it. So what if you didn't add to the, you know, you skipped a day to add to the sourdough? Or, I mean, how yeah, so forgiving is actually, actually, that's a great question. And I have, uh, I have a, actually a very interesting answer that involves this sourdough. So this sourdough was created by my son-in-law in Chicago. And um, um, he actually, uh, my daughter and son-in-law live in uh, High Park, uh, right around the corner from Obama's house. So we've actually named this sourdough Lactobacilli Obama, okay? So it's got a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a political uh, angle to it. But this sourdough I had forgotten about and had been sitting in my refrigerator for at least six weeks untouched. And I remembered, um, I remembered about three or four days ago, oh, I, I have to do the class, I have to get the sourdough ready. So all I did was I took maybe two or three tablespoons of the sourdough that had been sitting in the refrigerator untouched for months. And within, within about 30 hours, I had an active sourdough. So it's a, it's a forgiving, it's a very forgiving uh, thing. And when you're building a sourdough, if you forget for a day, just pick up, pick up and go and keep going with it. I mean, uh, it will be, it will be a, an easier, more straightforward process if you don't forget, but there's not gonna be any harm if it sits for 48 hours instead of 24 hours. It's just, it's gonna take a little bit longer for the sourdough to develop. Uh, question? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, I'm, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, when, you, when you're feeding it for seven to 14 days, is it out on the counter or in the fridge? So I leave it on the counter and I, I'm, I'm, that's actually a great question. So I do a couple different things. So in the summer, in the summer months, uh, like now, if it's very, very, very hot out, uh, I'll tend to uh, cover it and put it in a basement. So it's like, you know, 65, 70 degrees, okay? In the winter time, if it's very cold in the house, like let's say even though if the house is warm and you've got the heat on, you know, the sourdough reacts to the kind of the heaviness of the cold outside. And what I tend to do is one of two things. I will... Uh, take a tea kettle and boil some water and put water in a bowl and put it put that warm water in the oven and put the bowl of sourdough in the oven just to create a little warmth or if you have a microwave you can just bring some water to a boil um, and then put the sourdough in there so depending on the season I'll I'll choose um, if I'm trying to keep it a little warmer or a little cooler and did you say that when you mixed it with the 500 grams of flour, did you say 25 grams of sourdough? No, so, so when, I, when I start out with the, the, the initial sourdough, it's 50 grams of flour right, and 50 right. grams of water. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I meant when you were mixing it for the bread. How much you, for the bread, yes. So I used, I used uh, 150 grams of sourdough. Oh, 150. For a 500 grams of flour. And... I, I, I don't want to go too deep into bake, baker's talk today, but just, just to give you a, kind of like a, a foundation, bakers speak in a language called baker's percent. And all baker's percent means is that the flour is 100% and everything else is a percentage of the flour. So in this, in this particular recipe, I had 500 grams of flour, 325 grams of water, 150 grams of sourdough, and 12 grams of salt. So the sourdough was like uh, 65%. I mean, the, the water was 65%. The, the sourdough was uh, uh, 30%, and the salt was two and a quarter percent. So, so those proportions will vary depending on the strength of the flour, depending on the strength of the sourdough, depending on how quickly you want the dough to ferment. I mean, that's a whole other big conversation, but everything I do is always based on a specific uh, formula based on Baker's percent. Thank you. Okay. And if you, if you Google Baker's percent, 
If you go to the Bread Bakers Guild of America, they have a really uh, straightforward explanation, a more in-depth explanation of Baker's Percent um, um, than I did tonight. Um, but that, that's that's the foundation. It, this is not like it, it's it's a very uh, precise uh, way of, of dealing with ingredients yeah. and a very precise way of, of 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 analyzing. Like if if the flour changes from season to season, which it does every year, we will change the hydration, uh, the baker's percent of our of our recipes at the bakery simply based on the flour for that season. What kind of flour would the home baker use? Would you use bread flour? Great, Great question. So um, as a rule, uh, I like to use uh, certified organic stone ground flour if possible. And luckily uh, today, there are a lot of options uh, out there. Um, you know, King Arthur is a big brand. They have organic flour now. There's a very, very good mill that you can mail order to called Central Milling. Uh, it's in uh, Logan, Utah, and they will they will email you whatever. I mean, they'll they'll ship you whatever flowers you want. There's a I, in my book. I have a whole list, but if you just want to go to the supermarket or the health food store, almost every good food store now will carry quality organic flowers. Do you use whole wheat flour? Yes. Um, this particular recipe, this is an unbleached uh, organic white flour. Um, I use whole, I have a whole variety of whole wheat breads in the book. I have a whole variety of whole rye breads. I have buckwheat breads. I have multi-grain breads. Um, the, the, the book is full of about, uh, I mean, if you look at all my books, there's hundreds of recipes. I, I just wanted to keep it very, very uh, simple and straightforward tonight. Uh, tonight. I'm just going to take a quick peek over here and see. Okay, we are we are two minutes, so we're going to kill two minutes, and then we're going to see how our bread looks. How about one more question before we, we move on? There must be one more question. Are then. you covering it with a cloth? Or, or can you put it in a, um, like a big uh, apothecary jar with a glass lid? You mean the sourdough itself? Yeah, the starter. Yeah, so what I generally do is um, I, always, um, I always have a container that I'll keep my sourdough in. And I, you know, I, just for convenience, I use like a Pyrex type of container. Um, but I, always, I try to keep it always in the same container so that whenever, I, I'm, in the, whenever I'm working in the refrigerator, I, you know, I, I just know what my sourdough is. But you can see, if you look at this now, you can see, you can see how it's, it's bubbled and changed just in the time that we've been talking, okay? And, and if I were to warm, this is, it's kind of cool in here tonight, up, in, up here. So if I were to warm this up a little bit, it would really become, okay, our timer just went off. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're going to clear this, okay. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Whoa, that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, so this is just uh, uh, about halfway baked right now. So I'm going to put it back in the oven and we're going to give it uh, 20 more minutes. Let me just do this right here. <laughs> I know how to do that. And I want to talk. Temperature is it? This is uh, 435 degrees. My oven tends to run a little bit hot. So normally I would do it at 450. So I want to talk to you about why I use this uh, cast iron pot. So uh, by having a preheated uh, Dutch oven, uh, what you're doing is you're simulating a, a brick oven or a hearth oven. And uh, what happens is when you put the, the bread in the, in the pan and you put the lid on it, the bread releases steam 
in this enclosed container and the crust expands uh, in that moist environment, okay? And, it'll, it'll, and, and, and uh, breads will expand much easier in a moist environment than a dry environment. So after 20 minutes, after the bread has um, uh, reached its, 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 its maximum volume, uh, I take the lid off, and now all of the starches in that loaf, in that loaf are uh, kind of moist and ge gelatinized. And what happens when I take the lid off, and now it's baking in a dry oven, you'll end up with a much richer, crisper crust uh, than I would if I had just put it on a sheet pan. So you end up with a much more uh, rustic, a much more um, European style hearth bread when you bake it in, uh, in, in the Dutch oven. That particular uh, pan that I'm using is actually designed for bread baking. It's called the Challenger bread pan. Um, and a, a very serious home baker actually designed this thing and has made a business out of, of um, uh, creating these, these uh, bread pans. And if somebody wants a, a nice little gadget for baking their breads at home, uh, I, I highly recommend it. I'm going to go back now to this uh, dough that I started kneading before because I just want to show you how much it changed just in, in the 20 minutes that we were talking. You can see how it's, see how it's relaxed, okay? And when I was talking before about a coil fold, I would take the dough like this now. I'm gonna fold it over. I'm gonna fold it again. I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna fold it back again. I'm gonna fold it this way. Just going to shape it up a little bit and I will put it back in the bowl and I would do this you know once an hour for three or four hours depending on how the um, how the how the dough feels um, Mine's but not, that's too much uh, go ahead I would never do Can that. You see it okay does someone have a question comment no? Okay. Um, so, so what I did is I just, I just folded the dough. I'll leave it in here. I would do this again in another hour. Okay. And then after three or four hours, um, I would shape the bread, meaning I would just, when I go to shape the bread, I would take the dough. I would just round it like so. Okay. I would take, again, I purposely didn't use like fancy bread proofing baskets or anything, just a nice soft, uh, clean kitchen towel. Um, I'm going to dust just a little bit of flour in it. Like so. Then I would take this, like so. Then I do a little flour on top because I don't want it to stick. I fold it up like I had it before. So I'll have this out for three or four hours, uh, proofing and folding. And then I put this in the refrigerator, um, either in the morning for night or for the night for the morning. and you bake it directly from the refrigerator into the oven. So I had, I had taken it out of the fridge just five minutes before we started. Um, so you just let the, the dough rise very, very, very slowly in the refrigerator um, for eight to 12 hours and you go right into the oven. So the, 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 I'm not gonna call it the difficulty, but the challenge of sourdough bread baking is you have to build the sourdough, number one. And then number two, you have to have the sourdough ready for when you're gonna bake. And that's what I wanna talk about now. So let's say um, we wanted to bake sourdough bread tomorrow morning. 
and we have our starter right here. Okay? So tomorrow morning, uh, I need, let's say I need tomorrow uh, for that recipe, 150 grams of sourdough. Uh, what I will do is I will take, let me just grab a bowl here. What I will do is I'll take, and again, this is all in my book. And, and if you want, Lawrence, I can email you the exact uh, recipe to share, to share with the group. Um, I'm gonna do a hun um, 75 grams of water. I'm going to do 75 grams of flour. Okay. And I'm going to take uh, 50 grams of sourdough. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab my whisk. And I would let this ferment overnight at room temperature. And then tomorrow, that sourdough that, that mixture will look like this, and I will use this for my sourdough bread tomorrow. Again, eight to 12 hours is a, is a good rule of thumb. And you can actually see, you can see that the second you add flour and water to the sourdough, it immediately starts to ferment. You can see, you can see like almost instantaneous fermentation. And that's an indication of a very good sourdough. It starts, you know, you're giving fresh water, and fresh food to the culture that is hungry, and you, you've, you know, you've, you've created a, hopefully an optimal environment for the sourdough to grow, okay? Let me just wash my hands real quick. We're gonna take see how our bread's doing. Wow, now we're talking. So that needs about another 10 minutes, but you can see um, how nice how nice that looks. Unfortunately, you can't taste it, but it smells really good. <laughs> you know? But it's really, uh, it's really a very uh, straightforward, it's actually, I, I actually, is, I'm still fascinated with how quickly uh, sourdough culture starts to ferment. You can see just in those three or four minutes uh, how much activity there is, and that will just continue um, all night. So then tomorrow morning, uh, I, would, I would do exactly the same thing. I would have, take the 500 grams of flour, the 320 grams of water, I would take 150 grams of the sourdough, the salt, I would need the dough, to go through everything that we just went through. But uh, one thing that I'm very, very careful of and very mindful of is that you always have to have, you always have to keep some of your sourdough in order to uh, keep the culture going. And so generally what I do is after tomorrow morning, I would take a portion, I would take the remaining sourdough, this is uh, 220 grams or so, I would take the remaining 75 grams, uh, I would add 75 grams of water, 75 grams of flour to it, I'd let it sit out for three or four hours, and then I would keep it in the refrigerator, and you really only have to feed it once a week to keep the culture going. So once, once you're in the rhythm of, of making sourdough, you feed it once a week, 
you feed it the day before you make your bread. And um, I recommend people get into some type of weekly routine. So let's say Tuesday is your sourdough day. You could feed it in the morning before you went to work. When you come home after work, you could knead your dough, um, let it sit for three or four hours, shape it, put it in the refrigerator and bake it the next morning. Or you could do it in reverse, meaning that um, you could feed the sourdough at night, mix your dough in the morning, and leave it in the refrigerator um, overnight. Um, uh, and some people who, who want more of a rich sour flavor will actually leave the sourdough like this in the refrigerator for 24 hours and let it go very, uh, very slowly. And, and you, develop, you develop more um, lactic, lactic and acetic acids in a cold environment that you would do in a warmer environment. Uh, but that's it. I mean, all of these you know, fancy videos that you see online, it's, it's some version of what I just did here tonight. And I think in about four minutes, this bread's gonna be ready. It's looking, it's looking really good. So any questions before um, we go back to the oven and see how the bread's doing? Yeah. I have one, I was often uh, used uh, uh, apple cider that has started to ferment for yeah. dough for my daughter. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's what I will say. I have made sourdough bread from fermented fruit, apple cider. Uh, I've been in the south of France and northern Italy during grape season, and they'll put, they'll put the grape musk. I mean, there's no one way of making sourdough. So uh, I can assure you that some baker in, in, in Normandy or Brittany, where there's a lot of apples, is, is uh, starting his sourdough uh, from, from apple cider. And chances are the wild yeast that's in that environment would affect the sourdough anyway. Uh, if, uh, if we have a cast iron skillet, yep. but we don't have a Dutch oven, can we, what, yeah. what could we cover it with? Goes, even if you don't have the cast iron lid, as long as you have a lid that fits on it, you simply want to create an environment where you can capture the steam that comes off of the bread. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just so you know, I, I got this as a gift, the guy from the challenge when my book came out. But up until I had this Challenger bread pan, I just used a, 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 a cast iron pan with a cast iron lid for years. Okay. What is the name of your book? Oh, the new book is called Living Bread. And uh, there, so there's five books. There's Bread Alone, Local Breads, Living Bread, Panini Express, and Simply Great Breads. But there's three big, three big books and two small books. But and it was, very, it was very nice this year um, that the, that the uh, new book won the James Beard Award. Uh, and I, feel, I felt very fortunate that I got to win the award and I didn't have to go to the fancy award ceremony. <laughs> and did you say Living Bread? Yeah, li living bread, living bread. And, yeah, you, and get, you, you can get it on Amazon. The sourdough information? It's all in there. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a 24 page chapter on how to build a sourdough. Oh my goodness. Yeah, all different schools. I mean, there's, listen, this was a very simple sourdough tonight, but there's rye sourdoughs, there's buckwheat sourdoughs, there's whole wheat sourdoughs, there's stiff sourdoughs, there's uh, soft sourdoughs. The way they do sourdoughs in Italy is different from the way they do, do it in France. The way they do it in Germany is different than they do it. Uh, you know, when you're working with rye sourdoughs, it's very different from working with wheat sourdoughs. But I, I wanted tonight's class just to be very kind of straightforward and, um, and very easy. I mean, it's, it's time consuming, but there's nothing complicated about it. And I think our bread should be, should be ready right now. See, I told yeah, you. Yeah, okay. <gasps> wow. It is ready.
So um, the uh, the timing gods cooperated with us tonight, <laughs> and the, you were able to see the bread go from beginning to end and uh, see the final product with that. It doesn't often work out that well in a 40 minute class. <laughs> But Lawrence, I will email you this uh, this th th this recipe, and this way you can share it with the group if they don't want it. I don't want people to feel obligated to uh, buy the book. Well, you put in a plug for buying the book, and it sounds like if you're serious about sourdough, buy the book, and I think everyone would appreciate that. So I don't have so everyone. I think most people know how to get in touch with me. So email me, and in a day or two, I'll get you whatever Daniel sends me. Yeah. Okay, and I really want to thank everybody for coming. Did we want to, I'm sorry, Dan, I don't want to reopen it up. Any other last questions people have? No. Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Oh, nice. We have one of those books. You know. right. yep. We have the first one, I think. Yeah. Bread yeah. alone. Yeah. Hey, uh, oh. <laughs> Time to go. Out. <laughs> you know what time it is. Well, that, what is that? Let's go. Go, Pete. Good girl. What did he make his? Uh,